Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is a lock I've wanted to own for a very long time. You might think, why? It's nothing special. And, well, you might be right. It's an IFAM Huno or Huno 80. And uh, or it could be a Huno. Uh, I, I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, I've, I just always like this kind of uh, this lock. It's sort of a classic lock. It's been often copied in terms of uh, you know, the way it, it looks. There's loads of clones of this lock, but I think this is the original one. All hardened steel. Just look at how thick that shackle is. It's uh, even got a spacer here, so you can put a linker chain this side, a linker chain this side, so then that protects the uh, shackle sort of from being cut because it adds an extra hardened steel ring uh, to the whole thing. It's just a really nice lock. It's also a dimple lock, and I believe that this is the IFAM M2, so it's not a super high security uh, cylinder. And I don't think you can easily take the pins out, but I am sure I've got a video of me picking an M2 and gutting it, should you be interested in what the pins are. But it's an IFAM. It's gonna have some standards and it's gonna have lots of spools in. That's about it. But we can, I think, take the front off this. So we'll have a go at that if we can pick it. So let me just uh, grab a vise, get some picks, and uh, we'll have a go at picking it. We are in the vise and this is a heavy beast. It's a bit unstable. I hope it doesn't fall over on me. There is the key, and what a bitting. It's as good a bitting as a six-pin dimple lock really gets. Look at the highs followed by the lows, followed by the highs followed by the lows. You've got your short keeping, sorry, long keeping, short keeping, long keeping, and these, I think, are maximum adjacent cuts here, then uh, long keeping, short keeping, right at the back. Very cool indeed, a really nice lock. Operates very smoothly as well. Pull the whole shackle out, try not to let this ring drop on the surface there we go pull it out doesn't fit it's a shame it'd make a really nice hardened steel uh ring if it did pop that on um lock it up and see if we can pick it i've got a flat flag here which should be deep enough to reach in and i've got a dimple turner which is nice and long why long because well look it's about six millimeters before we even get to the the keyway so yeah a nice long turner really helps in this lock bit of firm tension uh, going in, so one's binding heavily, click on one, um, two is binding, so try and get on top of two, mm, okay, I think that's set, three's sort of binding, that's going to wiggle past three, very high, let's have a, anything on that, don't overset it, check pin one again, it's fine, pin two feels fine, pin three still fine, four, five, six, okay. So we need to concentrate more at the front here, um, put a bit more turning force on, one keeps popping back up, so that's good. Two, three, four now, five's binding, I, I, I really feel I have to wriggle past five. So let's wriggle, 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 let go of some of that t tension. Okay, um, feels okay, feels okay. Just go back through again, start at the beginning, one. Uh, two, three, uh, four, five, and pin six is at the back. Okay, there. Right, so back through. So pin one seems fine. Pin two seems fine. Pin three seems fine. Pin four, a uh, little click. Pin five, sort of fine there. Pin six at the back. Uh, little click okay back through again so lots of multiple passes through this lock pin two now there nice click pin three seems fine pin four seems fine pin five seems fine oh into a bit of a false set this is a good sign that means that we are close to opening because we're now resting on a spool pin um, so we're just going to feel our way through the lock oh hit pin five there do you see that and a bit more movement on the core it feels like pin six at the back can be set and yeah we are open look at that so lots of good feedback in this lock uh the pins seem to just pop up as you pick the other pins which is a good sign of good tolerances let's try to take this out of the vise without dropping it anywhere look how wide my vice drawers were ridiculous um then we should be able to open this all up so completely unlocked Move that ring over there. Now we should be able to, I think, get a shim. 
here underneath the locking bar like this go through to the other side and then slide the whole bar out I believe that this is possible I've done this before on other similar locks like this and that is the hardened steel uh, bar and then we can see that there is a I don't know what you want to call it a pin a detent which is should be sprung is it sprung yeah it's sprung okay and which will drop down oh and out so it's this way up it's attached to a spring it's very greasy which is good now if we're lucky I think we should be able to yep yeah, pull this bit out so we see the whole sort of cartridge rock set there's nothing down at the back it's just a spring here uh, which attaches to well here on the core uh, this sort of spinner plate just slides on which is really cool I've not seen that mechanism before actually really like that then don't know if this is easy to, if it's easy to slide off then I will be tempted to gut it further otherwise do you know what I'm sort of happy leaving it where it is well maybe maybe let's have a look hold on if I put that in if I lock it will that push out no it seems to be that doesn't want to push out even though it's unlocked yeah so something's holding it back so there must be a pin in here which uh, probably like a seventh pinhole which has something in it which uh, has another pin and spring basically which goes down and follows a groove on the inside of the core which will stop it from opening so you'd have to retract back this this bit here I think we can do it though I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna try and gut this I think I think I can do this without damaging it I don't want to damage this but, but I think I can do it without damaging it and I can reduce the spring pressure by locking it back up like that and then hopefully let's just see if I can slide this back uh, and I don't want the springs to come out and bite me but I think if I'm gentle and I take my time with this I should be able to gut this right let's have a go so I think pins one and two are standard and I think the rest might be spools but let's see what we get hmm <laughs> doesn't want to come out uh... aha got it oh it's a little spool how cute that is really cute and a very long key pin okay next up um, I might try and push from the side here like this there we go very fine I don't want to damage any of these, these springs either sorry about the tapping so we got so two was standard which I thought come on uh, I need something better to bash it with but I don't want to mark it uh, what do I have what do I have what do I have uh, oh back of a classic screwdriver that should work yes got it got it got it and that's a short key pin or short ish again don't want to pull on this very very fine foil here because um, I will bend it and that would be bad so I'm just going to again remove the spring see if I can tap out oh I tapped out uh, a spool pin which wasn't quite what I was intending and I don't know what I've done with my tweezers so I'm going to have to use my fingers so there we go I'll put this back together a bit later there we go, a really long key pin this time. 
They don't look like balanced stacks, meaning you don't necessarily need to have like um where you have a long keep in, you have a short drive, and where you have a long drive, you have a short keep in. Um, uh, or the other way around, you know what I'm talking about. So you don't need balanced stacks on this lock. There we go. Really tiny springs though. That's another little spool. Maybe if I put the key in just for a minute, it'll help poke up that. Doesn't want to come out. Come on. <laughs> There's a key pin down there. It just doesn't want to come out. I don't know why. Ah, oh, there's my tweezers. I don't think that's going to help, but let's see if we can get that out. Come on. I just don't want to hurt the, the lock because it's a really cool lock. Okay, well, maybe we'll just leave that one for a minute. Go to the next one. We slide down with my fingers, see what we get out of this. Okay, so we did get... That other keeping doesn't want to come out, but that's the long keeping from that chamber. And I think it's the last one I can take out because I don't want to slide the foil off anymore. Just in case I can't easily get it back on. I should be able to take this out. There we go. And that's the driver pin. And I think I'll get the key pin out. Oh, I've got that key pin out. There we go. I haven't got the last one. It's almost there though. A little tap. You can see it, can't you? Just poking up. Uh, and yes, there is another sort of pin in that chamber which will stop the core from rotating and coming out, but we don't need that to come out, so I want to leave that in there. There we go, got it. Perfect, right, so leave that alone. Move that here, and I'll show you all these pins. Um, so I was wrong about pin one being a, a standard pin, it is a spool, but I was right about two being standard and the rest being spools, so I'll take that as a as a as a bit of a win. Very 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 similar to a lot of iFams. I thought I wasn't going to get this, but here you go. See all those lovely pins. Look how long some of these driver pins are. They're crazy. They're super small, but very tight little spool pins. Really lovely. There you go. That's an iFam Huno or Huno uh, eighty. Super lock. I really love this one. Hope you did too. If you did, leave a like. If you've got a comment, leave one below. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because it really helps my channel out. And I will see you all next time.